Welcome to Jazz Building and Remodeling Workshop Series. I thought I'd spend a minute talking about a theme separator that we built. I built it out of this five gallon pail, as you can see. Um, for a little bit of a genesis of it, I tried building a regular cyclone separator by mounting these angle things. I mounted one on the side of the bucket and I had a pickup on the top and a little extension on the underside of the lid. It didn't work very well at all. So I did a little more research and I found some information on how to build a, a, a theme separator. And this is kind of what I built. Uh, the first thing I did that I thought was very good is a side discharge inlet. Uh, it was kind of difficult to build. If anyone was going to build one on their own, I recommend you get a, a square-ended launch instead of this one with the angle, because calculating this angle and that angle was needlessly difficult. The way we built the separator baffle, I built the, the baffle simply out of Luan plywood. I used drywall screws and one by one common pine stock. I decided to build this a little bit taller than other ones that I had seen because we have over here a reasonably decent sized shop vac with a two and three quarter inch hose and I just felt as though that this vacuum was going to overwhelm such a small cyclone if I only built it say three or four inches thick. So we tried it and um, it actually worked quite well. What we did was we basically vacuumed up about a half a gallon of sawdust and I fed it in slowly as to not to overwhelm the cyclone. And the results were quite good. It, it separated almost all of the coarse sawdust, but the really fine dust, which is sometimes referred to as wood flour, uh, does make it through the separator um, into the vacuum. And we'll do another video on, on how that works. Welcome to the Jazz Building and Remodeling Workshop Series. Uh, we just vacuumed up about a half a gallon of sawdust that I didn't want to take the two minutes to show you how to vacuum up dust. But I did want to show how well the theme baffle that we built worked. Um, basically, if we lift it up, I don't know how well this is going to show on the video, but there's a little bit of a veneer of dust on some parts of the wooden posts. There was a little bit of dust on the top of the baffle. Fair amount collected on the bottom. I don't know if that's a static charge or just the way it goes. Inside the five gallon pail it's kind of hard to see but there's a little bit of a pattern of how the dust seemed to separate a little bit uh, maybe in relationship to the to the vortex. I've also noticed that the fine dust somehow seems to separate on top of the coarse dust almost indicating that when you're running the, the, the baffle and the vacuum that a lot of the fine dust stays, stays in separation until the very end. Um, we took apart the shop vac, and I don't know how well this is going to show up, but there's practically no sizable sawdust in there. Maybe uh, a quarter of a teaspoon, but there is a veneer of dust on the inside of the tub. Could probably wipe that out with a damp paper towel or something. Likewise, the inside of the top of the vacuum has also got a little dust on it. And there is some of the fine powder that has settled obviously into the filter. So the, the conclusion is the really fine wood flour, the fine dust, is really being stopped, you know, ultimately by this paper filter. And I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of compressed air to give you an idea that there is some some fair amount of dust on it. And that wasn't too bad. Uh, before we ran this test, we, we blew everything out with the compressed air to get it about as clean as we could. So that kind of gives you an idea of how well this worked. I found out through experimenting that I can overload it. So as long as I feed it slowly, uh, cutting wood on the table saw does not seem to overload it.